the previous class we have studied about uh, simple linear regression. In this class we are going to discuss about multiple regression models. The class agenda is I am going to explain what is multiple regression model, then what is a least square method, then multiple coefficient of determination. In the multiple coefficient of determination I am going to explain what is adjusted r square also. Then what are the assumption in the multiple linear regression? Then I am going to test the significance of by using f test and t test. What is multiple regression model? So, multiple regression model is when there are more than one independent variable that is called multiple linear regression model. If it is only one independent variable it is linear regression model. When you take the expected value of this multiple regression model. So, we know that that assumption in your regression equations that the expected value of error term is 0. So, when you take expected value of y there would not be any error term that is that is a multiple regression equation. Here beta 1, beta 2 is the coefficient of x 1, x 2 and beta p is coefficient of x p. What is the estimation process for multiple regression? There is a multiple regression model y equal to beta 0, beta 1, beta 2 and beta p and x p an error term. From this we can go for multiple regression equations where beta 0, beta 1, beta 2 are unknown parameters. To find out this unknown parameter from the population we are going to collect sample data for x 1, x 2 like this up to x p and sample data for y that is dependent variable. With the help of sample data we are going to construct a sample regression equation. What is that? Compute the estimated multiple regression equation that is y hat equal to b 0 plus b 1 x 1 plus b 2 x 2 and so on plus b p x p where b 0, b 1, b 2, b p are sample statistics. So, with the help of sample statistics we are going to find out the population parameter that is beta 0, beta 1, beta 2, beta p. Then, then we will do a significant test then we will see that whether the beta 1, beta 2 is equal to 0 or not equal to 0. After testing that we will find out what is the actual value of beta 1, beta 2 at the population level. This is the process of doing a multiple regression model. This is similar to the simple linear regression model, but what we have done in the simple linear regression model only x 1 and y 1 was taken only one independent variable is there, but here more than one independent variable that is only difference all other concepts are same. So, what is simple versus multiple regression? In simple linear regression b 0, b 1 bear the sample statistics used to estimate the parameter of beta 0 and beta 1, but in multiple regression the parallel is that the statistical inference process with b 0, b 1, b 2 and b p denoting the sample statistics are used to estimate the parameter of beta 0, beta 1, beta 2 and beta p. So, what is the meaning of this one is with the help of sample statistics b 0, beta 1, beta 2 we are going to predict the population parameter beta 0, beta 1 and beta 2. In simple regression there was only b 0 was there, beta 1 was there only one independent variable. In multiple regression more than one independent variable that is only difference. Least square method in simple linear regression also I have derived the formula for b 0, b 1 by having the assumption that when we draw a line the error term that is the sum of the square of the error has to be minimized. But the y hat there in simple linear regression y hat i was b 0 plus b 1 x 1, but in multiple regression this y hat i equal to b 0 plus b 1 x 1 plus b 2 x 2 and so on plus b p x p. p is the number of independent variable. So, all other procedure is same. Here also what we are going to do that there are, but here it is a multi dimensional picture we cannot draw a two dimensional picture because we need to because there are more than one independent variable that is going to be a, a multi dimensional picture that we cannot explain with the help of a, uh, a simple graph. The least square estimate what happened y hat equal to b 0 plus beta 1 x 1 beta 2 x 2 
up to beta p and x p because there would not be error term here because the expected value of the error term becomes 0. So, how to interpret the value of b 1, b 2 and b 3? How will you interpret the coefficient of b 1 is by keeping other variables constant if the x 1 is improved by 1 unit the y hat will be improved by b 1 units. It is a similar way for simple linear regression, but here when you are interpreting one coefficient we have to assume that that will be other coefficient for other uh, independent variables are constant. We will take an example. This example problem is taken from statistics for business and economics is author by Anderson. As an illustration of multiple regression analysis, we will consider a problem faced by a trucking company. The major portion of the business involves deliveries throughout the local area. To develop a better work schedule, the manager want to estimate total daily travel time for their drivers. So, they want to estimate this is going to be total daily travel time is going to be our dependent variable. There are 10 assignments, there are 10 assignment drivers x 1 equal to miles travelled, y equal to travel time. There is a connection between x 1 and y. What is the meaning of that one? When the travel time will increase, distance travelled also high. So, y is the dependent variable, x 1 is independent variable. I have brought the screenshot at the end of this lecture, I will run this codes, then you can understand in better way. Now, I will show that I will explain the screenshot. Import pandas as pd from statsmodel.formula.api, import OLS that is ordinary least square regression models. From statsmodel.stats.anova, import anova underscore lm because this library will be used to see the anova table for a regression model then import matplotlib.pyplot as a plt. The file name is which I have stored is a trekking that is an excel file. I am going to store this data into an object called df1. df1 equal to pd.read underscore excel that file name. So, if you want to know what is the data set, this is the data set. So, in this data set there are one travel underscore time is dependent variable, there are two independent variable one is x1 another one is number of deliveries. The meaning of x 1 is miles travelled. Before going to regression, first we have to have an idea between this independent variable x 1 miles travelled and travel time dependent variable is there any connection. So, the first step is first you have to draw the scatter plot. So, import matplotlib.pyplot as a plt. I am drawing the scatter plot d f 1 x 1 is in the x axis travel underscore time in y axis green color. So, label is travel time this one. So, what is happening that there seems to be some relation between this miles travelled and the travel time. That means, if the obviously when the, the miles travelled is more the travel time also will be more. This is between one independent variable and one dependent variable. Similarly, we will take another variable number of deliveries as an independent variable then travel time as the dependent variable there also seems to be there is a positive correlation. Why it is required that if there is no correlation at all between that independent variable and dependent variable we need not do the regression analysis. Now, in this graph both the variable are taken together what is that where is the distance travelled and the number of deliveries this is the code for to show both the variables in the same figure. So, what are I am going to do? First, I am going to take one independent variable, I am going to plot uh, construct the regression equation, then I am going to take both independent variables together, then I am going to construct a regression equation. The first taking for one independent variable, this is a y hat equal to 1.27 plus 0 0.0678 x 1. I will show you in the next slide how we got this answer. So, I am going to do a regression analysis that regression model I am going to say reg 1 equal to y less formula. The travel time is taken as the dependent variable x 1 distance travelled is taken as the independent variable. So, fit 1 equal to reg 1 dot fit. So, print fit 1 dot summary. So, what is happening here we are getting the coefficient 
what is the coefficient? The intercept is 1.2739, x1 is 0 0.0678. So, how we can write it? y hat equal to 1.2739 plus 0 0.0678 x1 variable. This is an independent variable. You see that the same answer we are getting here. So, for here one more things you have to understand. See the r square is 0 0.664. Okay. Now, in the next what I am going to do, I am going to introduce another variable here. After introducing the another variable, I am going to see what is going to happen this r square. The r square says the goodness of the model, the higher the r square the model is better. What is the meaning of 66.4 here, otherwise 0 0.6 is 4, 66.4 percentage of the variability of y can be explained with the help of this model. Now, what happening that I am going to bring another independent variable that is number of deliveries. So, when you bring another independent variable, I will show you that model. You see that model equal to OLS travel underscore time tilde sign x1 plus n underscore of underscore deliveries. So, this is two independent variable. If there are three, you can write it plus that variables. This is the way to do the multiple regression in Python. So, now what is happening here? You look at the y intercept, it is y equal to minus 0 0.8687 plus 0 0.0611 x1 plus 0 0.9234 x2. Here you can call it as x2 is where what is the meaning of x2? Uh, number of deliveries. Okay. So, what is this? This is important. We will verify this in the previous slide also we got the same thing minus 0 0.869 plus 0 0.0611 x1 plus 0 0.923 x2. Now, look at this the previous r square. Now, look at this now this r square after introducing new variable. After introducing new variable the r square is previously it was 0.6 something now it is increased to 0 0.90. So, adding a new variable has helped to improve the explaining power of this regression model. Then I explain there is one more term adjusted r square because in many previous lectures I am saying that I will do the next lecture, but I am not able to do that one. Now, in this lecture I will explain what is the meaning of adjusted r square. The other point you have to understand you look at the p value for each independent variable. So, what is the null hypothesis for here? What is the null hypothesis h naught equal to beta 1 equal to beta 2 equal to 0. So, a null hypothesis for you look at the p values here see for x 1 it is a 0 0.00. 0. So, we have to reject null hypothesis. When I reject null hypothesis beta 1 is not equal to 0 that means, there is a relation between x 1 and y 1. Similarly, look at the number of deliveries corresponding p value is 0 0.004 that also less than 0 0.05. So, that hypothesis beta 2 0 also had to be rejected that means, at a population level there is a the relationship is significant. What is the meaning of that one is even at the population level between x 2 and y there is a significant relationship is there. A relationship among SST, SSR and SSC we know that SST total sum of square equal to regression sum of square plus error sum of square. SST this I have explained in my previous lecture total sum of square is this way for your convenience I am drawing one more time this is your y bar, this is your y hat. So, this is y. So, this distance not this one. Okay, this distance is your SSR. this distance is your SSE. So, the total distance is SST. So, this total distance is SST. So, what is SST? SST is y i minus y bar whole square sigma. What is SSR? y hat i minus y bar whole square. What is SSE? y minus y hat whole square. So, when we have only one independent variable look at this 
here what is the SST when you add this SST equal to summation of 15.87 plus 8.02. So, it will come around to 89 SST. You see the residual sum of square. So, what is SSE? SSE is 8.02. When there is only one independent variable, SSR is 15.871. To get this regression model output, you have to use this one print ANOVA underscore LM, the you have to call the first regression model. The next slides we are going to bring another ANOVA table when there are two independent variables. For that purpose, ANOVA underscore table equal to ANOVA LM model 1 type 1 ANOVA table. Now, you see that the SST is same, SST is around 22, around 22. But look at SSE, SSE is 2.29. So, error has been decreased. You see SSR, SSR is these two 15.87 plus 5 approximately 20 point something. So, what is happening when you introduce a new variable, the value of SSR is increased to 20. Previously, SSR only one independent variable, SSR is 15. So, after introducing a new variable, the 5 unit of variance is increased. And uh, the other point is previously, when there are only one independent variable, is the error term is 8.02. Now, the error is reduced to 2.29. So, that is the advantage of using more number of independent variable, so that we can have more accurate model. Now, you will see what is multiple coefficient of determination. When there is a simple linear regression model, we have called it coefficient of determination. Now, there is a multiple independent variable, we are going to call it is multiple coefficient of determination. It is SSR by SST. So, what is R square SSR? Yeah, SSR is when you add these two 50.87 plus 5.7. 21.6. Uh, SST is when you add all 3, 20, 22.2, approximately 23.1. So, there is a 90.4 percentage of the variability of y can be explained with the help of these two independent variables. So, the R square is increased. So, it is a good model when compared to simple linear regression model. So, now we will go for another concept adjusted R square. What is the purpose of adjusted R square? So, adding independent variable causes the prediction errors to become smaller. So, we know that see SST equal to SSR plus SSE. So, when you add independent variable prediction error to become smaller, what will happen? This error will become smaller. So, what will happen? This when SSE becomes smaller, SSR will become bigger one. Because SSR equal to SST minus SSE, when SSE becomes smaller, SSR become larger. So, causing R square to increase. Whenever you add any independent variable, SSR will increase, SSE will decrease due to that SSR will increase, due to that the R square will increase. Many analysts prefer adjusting R square for number of independent variable to avoid overestimating the impact of adding an independent variable on the amount of variability explained by the estimated regression equation. So, what is happening instead of using R square, we are going for adjusted R square. The advantage of adjusted R square is whether the added new variable is it is really as an explaining variable or it is a nice variable. Otherwise, the added new variable how much it is helping to explain the variance of the existing model. So, what is the formula for adjusted R square is. Previously, what was the formula for uh, R square? See that R square equal to SSR divided by SST. SSR is uh, explained variance divided by overall variance. So, this explained variance, the regression sum of square can be written this way SST minus SSR. SST minus SSC. Because what is happening this SSR, this SSR represents a regression sum of square for all independent variables. 
So, when you add a new variable, you cannot know the contribution of that new variable into the SSR. We are going to split the SSR into two terms that is SST minus SSE. So, now this will become 1 minus SSE divided by SST. But what we have to do? We have to write the degrees of freedom because what is the meaning of adjusted is it is adjusting for degrees of freedom. So, when SSE what is the degrees of freedom? SSE the degrees of freedom is n minus p minus 1. What is the n? n is the total number of data set, p is number of independent variable minus 1. Here it will become n minus 2 divided by SST, you write SST as it is, it is n minus 1. So, when you simplify this, you will get this much. So, here what is the n? n is number of observations, what is the p? It is number of independent variables. When you substitute here R A equal to 1 minus 1 minus R square n minus 1 divided by n minus p minus 1. When you expand this R square, otherwise you write R square equal to SSR by SST, you will end up with this relationship. This is adjusted R square is 0 0.88. We look at this, that is the meaning of 0.88. So, another importance of this adjusted R square is sometime uh, you see what will happen, I am writing here R square. Yeah, adjusted R square. What will happen? Whenever you introduce new variable, the value of R square will increase. Adjusted R square also will increase. So, I will explain what is the meaning of R square and adjusted R square. Assume that there is a one dependent variable. There are many independent variable. That independent variable is x1, x2, x3 and x4. Now, what I am doing here? I am going to build a regression model. So, first what I will do? First I will take y, then I will write regression equation in terms of x1. So, what will happen? R square will increase, adjusted R square also will increase. Now, taking y is a dependent variable, I am going to bring two independent variable. Uh, R square will increase, adjusted R square also will increase. So, what will happen if the x2 is really helping to ex uh, explain the variance of the y? Sometime, suppose say variable x3, x1 comma x2, this x3 variable is the noise variable. Noise variable means it will not help to explain the variable to y, it is going to disturb the existing relationship. So, what will happen? R square will increase, adjusted R square will start decreasing. So, this is the hint for us that the variable which you have added is not helping to explain the model. Instead of that, it is deteriorating the existing model. So, x3 should not be added. That is the meaning of this adjusted R square. Most of the time, if the value of R square and adjusted R square is similar, that means that we have no need to increase any further variable into the model. That means, we have reached the good model. If there is a gap, for example, R square is 0.9, adjusted R square is 0.3, that there is a possibility of adding more independent variable into the model. Now, let us see adjusted multiple coefficient versus multiple coefficient. If a variable is added to the model, yeah, that is the point which I am saying previous slides. If a variable is added to the model, R square become larger even if the variable added is not statistically significant. It is very important. The adjusted multiple coefficient of determination, that is adjusted R square, compensate for the number of independent variable. So, it is adjusted means it is adjusted for the number of independent variable, otherwise adjusted for its degrees of freedom. If the value of R square is smaller and the model contains a large number of independent variable, adjusted coefficient of determination can take negative value. It is a very important point here. The interpretation of R square and adjusted R square is not same. The R square is that how much variability of Y is explained but the adjusted R square is not the same interpretation. What will happen many time adjusted R square may become negative. Okay? You should be very careful on that. Then we will go for checking model assumptions. So, as I told you in the beginning of the class y equal to this is the uh, regression model. When you there will be error term, when you go for regression equation there would not be error term. because when you go for expected value of y beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 and so on and there would not be error term because 
the expected value of error is 0. We will go for some assumption. What is the first assumption? The error term epsilon is a random variable with mean or expected value of 0. What is the implication? For a given value of x1, x2 and up to xp, the expected or average value of y is given by this way. You look at this, when you go for expected value of y, there is no error term. This equation represents the average of all possible values of y that might occur for the given value of x1, x2 up to xp by expected value of y. We will go for second assumption. The variance of epsilon is denoted by sigma square and is the same for all values of the independent variable x1, x2, xp. What is the implications? The variance of y about the regression line equal to sigma square and is the same for all values of x1, x2, xp. If it is different, we will call it is there is effect of heteroscedasticity. Why this point is required? If you want to compare the variance of x1, x2 up to xp should be same, then only there is a meaning for comparison. The third assumption is the value of epsilon are independent. What is implications? The value of epsilon for a particular set of values for a independent variable is not related to the value of epsilon for any other set of values. Another way the error terms are independent. When you plot that error term, there should not be any pattern whether it is increasing or decreasing pattern. That is the meaning of this third assumption. Then fourth assumption, the error term epsilon is normally distributed random variable reflecting the deviation between y value and the expected value of y given by beta 0 plus beta 1 x 1 plus beta 2 x 2 up to beta b x p. What is implications? Because of beta 0, beta 1, beta b are constant for given values of x 1, x 2, x p, the dependent variable y also normally distributed random variable. Because what will happen? The error term, it should be independent, but it should follow a normal distribution. Normal distribution with equal variance. If it is not equal variance, then it will go to the second assumption also get violated. Now, look at this graph of a regression equation for multiple regression analysis with two independent variable. x1 is in one independent variable, x2 is another independent variable. See this is the mean value of x1, this is mean value of x2, you see this is a plane. So, multiple regression equation is explained with the help of a, a surface, otherwise this is called a surface reference model, it is a plane. Now, the equation is not the line, it is a plane. Otherwise, they will call it is RSM also, response surface model. Another name for regression is response surface model, because now this is the surface. Yeah, response variable and response surface. In regression analysis, the term response variable is often used in place of the term dependent variable. Instead of saying dependent variable, we will say the response variable. Furthermore, since the multiple regression equation generates a plane or surface, the graph is called response surface. In this lecture, I have explained what is multiple regression model, then I have explained what is the connection between simple linear regression model and multiple regression model, then I explained the least square model, then I have explained what is the meaning of R square and adjusted R square. Then I have explained various model assumptions. The next lecture, I am going to test the significance of beta 1, beta 2 and beta 3 with the help of F test and T test and also we will see uh, a demo on Python programming to do a multiple regression. Thank you very much.